Um, I, I, I kind of want to start today off talking a little bit about base. I mean, we're going to talk about base. We're going to get into Brett, see what else is going on out there in the space. But Money Gang Crypto, ba banger name, um, I, Money Money Gang, that, that sounds like something I would like. How are you doing today? Well, how, how are we doing, guys? Uh, good to have you, have you all here. It's good to be on the space, man. I'm looking forward to this. We're going to get into some banging meme coins. Let's find our next thousand X. Let's go. Come on. Oh man! All right, let's go. That—that's what you guys are here for. You're—you're you're here to give me the next thousand X. I'm, I'm only a ten X right now. I mean, I need to up my game a little bit. But all right, we—we we got a few more speakers coming up. The back room is getting everything situated. I wanna—I wanna dive right into it. I wanna ask everybody up here. Icebreaker question: What is your favorite thing happening right now in base on on that chain? Whether it be the meme coins, whether it be something else. I don't know if you just like Coinbase. Maybe you like Brian's hairstyle. I don't know. I, I want to know what all of you are thinking. But, all right, I don't see hands, so we're going to pretend that we're back in elementary school or middle school. I'm going to just call on random people. Block, uh, th th those laser eyes, that just caught my eye. We're going to go to Block, then we're going to go to Fiddy. Yeah, to be honest with you, I've been telling myself for, what, the past two and a half weeks, all right, look, I'm going to look into base. I'm going to look into base. I probably would have gotten to Brett and, and made, um, uh, you know, a million dollars if I had done that, if I had not been lying to myself. So, yeah, dude, I, I've i been hearing so much about base. Uh, meme coins, um, that's probably the, mo the thing I'm most bullish on is the fact that uh, we have just absolute meme coins on base uh, that are sort of vetted uh, a little bit a little bit more, uh, I don't know, a little bit more looked at by actual Coinbase, you know? So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm more bullish on is, is the fact that we have meme coins um, on base. Uh, I know that Solana is sort of, uh, it's it's Solana meme coin season, but base is, is pretty much right there with, with, with Sol at the moment. So, um, yeah. It's exciting stuff going on right now. It's kind of the first time in my in my history in my in my few years of, of being in be, of being here in Web three in crypto Twitter uh, to see two two different chains sort of doing the the same exact thing so well um, and not really. I mean, there there I guess I guess you could you could say com competition is is there, but um, they're they're really just like everybody's enjoying enjoying their time, whether it is Solana or Base, and most people are on both. So I've been telling myself uh, for the past two weeks I need to get back uh, into like doing my research and stuff. I've been I've been so lazy and enjoying the Solana meme coin season. I know I can do the same thing on base, but I haven't been. But I need to. So thank you for this reminder. Hey, absolutely, and that's one of my favorite parts. I mean, for me, if I'm going to be trading meme coins and playing the the crypto casino, you got to have low gas. You have low gas and you and you make it fun. You have all the people there. Like that that's pretty much all that I look for. I want to see people and I want cheap transactions. That's pretty much it. But Fiddy, you had your hand up and I want to let you know. We just plugged in the chat GPT extension to the spaces. So if you use if you use words, it will automatically translate to emojis for us. So we, we are good to go. Fantastic. I'm going to try I'm going to try that. This is pretty neat. I, I'm glad Mario's sophisticated with that's probably because he knows Elon. He's able to work out some kind of a special deal on this thing. But um, I, I'll tell you so. So I, I have a different take on this than Block does. Um, very different. I do not think it's the same. Uh, it's the same. I don't think them function the same. I think that the base is, is really what's going to bring mass adoption here. And I'll tell you why. I was sitting and watching a Laker game and I saw a Coinbase commercial. I had five or ten friends of mine call me up. They're like, hey, did you just see a Coinbase commercial? I did. And I do have friends that actually watch sports. So I'm actually one of those people that enjoy sports, not just like DJing and playing Game of Thrones or whatever the fuck you guys do. And um, I'll tell you something. You're basically... That we've been talking about how to onboard people. This is the onboard tool. You've got, you've got ETH with no gas. And people have been trying to figure out how to make it cheaper. Well... Jesse's been sitting there working with Coinbase and like, I know, I have an idea, I have an idea. Brian, let's do this. So these guys figured it out. So I think Base is really going to really champion this thing. They're also going to come out with their own little native coin. I'm almost positive of that. Once they do that, that's going to make things a lot easier. So there's a lot of stuff sh you should be watching on Base. I mean, Base is definitely a good thing. Doesn't mean Soul is not great. Doesn't mean ETH is not going to come back. Roaring Vitalik is not stupid. He knows what's going on. 
Um, and I re also realized, I know people say, oh, I like the cheap gas, I like the expensive gas. It doesn't freaking matter. We, we do whatever we have to do where we make money. If we pay gas and we make money, we're happy. If we don't pay gas money and we make, we make money, we're happy. So we just kind of follow that little meta. But I definitely think base is pretty cool. There, there's a project that I'm actually consulting with. It's called Pola, P-O-L-A. And what they've done is they've actually created a swap on their, right on their site where you can actually, if you don't know how to use base, if you don't know how to swap it out, you go in there and you can swap Sol or ETH right from there. And I think that's the future. People need to make things easier. Things are super complicated sometimes for people that are newbies. So I think the, the easier things are to do for people so they don't sit there like, I have my base Ethereum, what do I do with it? You help them out with that, it's a game changer. That's my thought. Oh man, that that was an absolute banger. I hope there's uh, the ability to sound clip that one. And on top of that, you you just gave me an epiphany. I'm I'm sitting here listening to you, and I realize that money makes me happy. <laughs> well, look look at what happens in Twitter Spaces, guys. But I want to throw this over to one of the new speakers that just came up, uh, Joa. I think I'm pronouncing your name right. What what's your favorite thing about Base? I'll be honest with you. I, I haven't been on base yet. I know what they're watching. I slept on it, and I don't want to sleep on it anymore because I see what's happening. But I was, in, I am involved in meme coins, mostly on ETH, some on Sol, but mostly ETH. And, you know, I think they're being really smart. I think they're being strategic. They understand that it is an onboarding mechanism, and they're going to suck up liquidity, which is honestly what I believe. Hey, that's, that is a very, very fair take, um, and th this isn't even the first time I've heard it. I want to, all right, I was about to call on somebody, but we got Zillion raising his hand. Floor is yours. Hey, i uh, just giving you some uh, uh, kind of feedback and what I've seen uh, out of Token 49. There's a lot of stuff launching on base. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, you know projects, etc., trying to raise uh, venture money to uh, or seed money, pre-seed money to go on base. So I think there's a lot of things, a um, lot, of, lot of things will come out very soon on base. Uh, now uh, on the native uh, coin thing, I don't think Coinbase will launch any native coin anytime soon, given the SEC uh, fact that it's all over it. So, uh, so I think we're uh, we're not there yet, but definitely on base. So, um, uh, can I talk about what I've seen interesting from a meme coin perspective? Can we do that or or not? Absolutely, go for it. We love meme coins. So. Yeah, Token 49, uh, there was a very interesting project that uh, that uh, had a lot of uh, traction. Um, these guys are basically recycling a very old idea called the Coin Graveyard. Uh, so the, their idea is basically to capture community value by, uh, by allowing uh, failed coins to be buried and minting the new meme coin. And I think they'll get some traction because they will capture that residual value of dead coins. That's all I got to say. Oh, man, I love that. I, if all of my dead coins and NFTs were actually worth something, I, w I, might, I might be able to buy Twitter. Like, I, I don't think Elon that, will that, let that happen. Well, that's exactly what they're doing, and I think they're onto something. So it's something to follow. T tell them to DM me the pre-sale address. I am all for that. But now, I'm, I'm picking on people we'll today, do. guys. I want to money gang crypto. What is your favorite thing about base? And then after that, we're, we're jumping straight into meme coins, guys. Well, uh, I would say that my favorite thing about base is the fact that, I mean, I got a lot of ETH. So the fact that you, you guys are taking all the traction away from Solana is just great for me. I've got friends who are in base. They, they like launching meme coins. I know other networks that are even cheaper than base um, that are doing mad X's as well. Uh, but yeah, I, for me, like as an ETH maxi or, or previous ETH maxi, I like the fact that you're taking it away. You're, you're heavily incentivizing people to use the native gas token, which is ETH, of course, on base. Um, an L2 that's quite easy to get into. Uh, I think Ethereum's kind of absolutely destroyed in terms of being able to put, put out new meme coins, having NFTs and collections like that, and launching things. So for builders, it's great. Anyone who, who goes on to base to build is great. But I, I know other networks that are even cheaper than that. So, uh, yeah, there's plenty of potential there. Hey, boom. There we go. Fair take. Uh, love it. All right, guys. It, it, it's about that time. We're, we're going to just start talking about meme coins. I think that's probably why everybody's here. Most likely where all the listeners here. They want the next 1,000 or 69,000. It's just like I do. But, 
well, everybody, the main question I want to know is, what do you like about meme coins? And it, you don't even have to like it. Just your thoughts on them. Good, bad, pretty, ugly, skinny, fat. Like, I, I don't know. I just want to hear some words, and I would like to laugh along the way. But, Block, over to you. Yo, the main thing... <laughs> Yo, D-Gen as hell. Look, man, the main thing I love about meme coins is the fact that you can, like you said, 69,000. Yo, you literally put, yo, I put five sol into a meme coin uh, like two nights ago. And at the top, it was worth uh, 12K. So, like, where else can you get that? Where else can you do that? I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I actually have no idea where else, what else I would be doing if crypto didn't exist, if Bitcoin was never created. I, I, I actually have no clue what I would be doing, but I know I'm in the, dude, I'm in the very best time to be alive. I'm happy as hell that we have these. Uh, if meme coins were never created, but crypto was created, it would just be very, very slow. I think um, people would be treating them a little differently. Like, uh, yo, we'd be looking at Solana as the meme coin, or we'd be looking at uh, Avax as a meme coin. But it's, but it, or I guess an altcoin. But, but it's not. Like, it's literally something a little bit more serious to take, you know, take seriously. So we have to have something to put like our like silliness into. So uh, the fact that we can just, dude, someone made a, a, a meme coin of my PFP and just called it Block, and they, and they, and now my my face my pfp is in like 400 people's wallets right now bro yo it's the ticker is block and it, I, I don't know man I, I wasn't that you like, I, huh wasn't that you <laughs> no it wasn't me it was, it was one, one of the homies here. like we were on a, we were on a, a shill space like i had a i had a shill space and people were um were coming up presenting their projects and he was like yo this is not this is not working out these these shills are not not the greatest and uh so he was like you should do it you should do your own token and just name it block and i was like nah and he just did it himself five minutes later on pump.fun it's on radium now super interesting stuff dude that's what i love about meme coins bro it's like you literally have the ability to there, dude there's there's uh, meme coins made of everything and anything they got ninja turtle meme coin like bro it's it's the best bro so yeah dude I, I love the fact that we can take our silliness um as adults right and still be silly and, and fun and, and have a good time with each other but also build some communities and make a lot of money that's those are my favorite things about meme coins oh yeah, man you, you ended that, that with <laughs> such a banger Oh, yeah, I, I was going to throw it right to you. Go go ahead, Hexy. I was just going to say uh, real quick, uh, Block, I completely relate to that because uh, someone made Bastard Token on Paul's chain. He's actually listening right now. Shout out, Marco. And it cracked me up. Like, if I didn't know the guy, I would never have supported it. But because I knew the guy and it was like a homage to me and my character, I just love that shit, man. I, I love it so much. So I went and bought like so much of the supply so i'm like the biggest holder of it now but just because i supported it and yeah man i love it like meme, meme coin uh, culture is the best it's the best culture and i genuinely think that this cycle that we're in this bull run we're in now is going to be heavily surrounded uh the biggest gainers are going to by far be meme coins and i think we're all in the right space for all of that so yeah shout out to my meme coin bros uh oh there there we go you heard it everybody whale alert we we know who's paying for dinner next time but I want to throw this <laughs> things over around me, the boys. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Fiddy. Your your turn. I was going to say, you know, Elon did tweet about a month ago, like he who owns the meme owns the universe. I mean, he really said that, and everybody was kind of like, hmm, what know what that means? Well, we sure know what it means now. Um, and I've been playing with meme coins that really make sense, that are funny, unique. And then I have a couple that actually make sense that have some utility. I know you guys don't like to hear utility in meme coins, but going forward, we are going to need something. You know what I mean? So, like, right now, like, there's one that I really like. It's called um, uh, Moon Trump, and I, I, I love what they're doing. Their big lo slogan right now is make memes moon again. I love that. They're coming out with merch. I wanted to wear that. I went to bare knuckle fighting this weekend. I sat with Nate Diaz. I would have thrown that hat on his head if he had if I had merch with me, but I didn't. But that's the thing. Memes have to be fun. Like, Pepe was fun. It was cute. Like, no matter who it is, I remember my kids saw that. Oh, daddy, that's cute, you know? So I think if the memes are fun and these guys have good teams, that's kind of the winner. There's a lot of cool stuff. So whether you're on base, whether you're on soul, you've got some cool polar bears on on so You've got Brett. You've got a Smog. You've got uh, Myra, which is a cool dog on, uh, on, on Solana. That's Raj's dog. 
And then you've got really good ones, like I've got Neurohub, who's right down below, and they are a token, but they're doing some crazy AI, AI stuff. So people are kind of sleeping on AI. They're, not, they're forgetting about it. They're just investing into the next thing that's going to be um, mooning that night. And I'll tell you, what's going to make me really happy with memes is when I can go to bed with my memes, wake up, and not have to worry and check in that chart really quick, make sure it didn't drop. Because that's the one thing that we don't have a little safety on. Like, I know Block sold the shit before he went to bed because I know Block. He got that 12, 14 soul out because if he wakes up, that thing's too soul. So we need to get our um, memes controlled. We need meme control. That's what we need. Let's make meme control. I'm going to talk to the moon chart. Maybe he'll help me out. Uh-oh, there, there we go. <laughs> meme control, but uh, com community-driven, decentralized, not, not government meme control. But, man, that, that made me think. Uh, I want I want a barbecue chain so that I can have hamburger and hot dog meme coins. But money gang, over to you. What's going on? Yeah, I like I like what Fiddy was saying about uh, having some sort of kind of like I think he mentioned a little bit of utility and being able to wake up the next day and be in control. Like I'm gonna quickly chill it real quick, but nine inch decks like we are the first meme coin decks on Ethereum on Pulse Chain, and like we literally reward you. For, for farming your meme coin so for staking it for putting them in in liquidity liquidity pools and earning the uh bbc token you also have the nine inch token it's a play on one inch obviously uh you can kind of read between the lines there but that is something that i've seen on the market market that's been missing right like there's so many meme coiners and actually if you had shib or doge it's actually been a better store of value than like the s p 500 over a long enough period of time but what if you could get rewarded kind of like it was on like cake or on binance bsc back in 2021 what if you could get rewarded for that well you can do that by doing single-sided um staking as well and being able to be put it in um, liquidity pools to farm the bbc token as well so we've kind of brought that utility little shield but i'd, I'd recommend it well, what does bbc stand for go, go on hexy you you hit it uh, sorry i gotta jump in there it obviously stands for big bonus coin and nothing else so <laughs> hey well you you guys said it not me uh, let's not get the host in trouble today but I want some thoughts from a new speaker, Merck. What 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 are your feelings towards meme coins? Give it give us something. Hey, what's going on, David? Yeah, man. Um, you know, gateway drug. Obviously, I think everyone's kind of talked about that. It's kind of how I uh, I came into the crypto space back in uh, late twenty twenty, early twenty one. Um, so it's just the easiest thing to onboard people. You know, with the um, attention based economy that we got going on, people they're not captivated for long. So. You see something flashy, you see something that makes you laugh. It piques your interest enough to kind of take that that dive into what, you know, what's next. And then you're like, oh, shit, I can make some money off of it. Well, then, you know, if you do, that's kind of what hooks you, right? So I think that's the main, the main importance is what I've seen with meme coins is when people try too hard to launch a meme coin that um, either they're, they're too hard, they're too focused on making the money or they're, they're not focused enough on the... Uh, you know, the, the humor part of it, then it just doesn't, it doesn't captivate the community. Um, the community doesn't get involved and it just kind of, you know, goes to the wayside. And what happens is those people are anonymous. So they just take their liquidity and run and, and start again. You try trial and error. Can I ask a question, David? Yeah, go for it. And then we're going to throw it over to Matt. What, what, yeah. What's a five step best practice to launch a meme coin from, from your experience, my, my experience, um, uh, I, I've never launched one. I would say go go into Twitter Spaces, f tell everybody to follow David Ten X. Um, don't unfollow David Ten X. Um, go to Coinbase and order me some Uber Eats. Like, I, I, bro, that that sounds like a banger right there. But Maddie, what were what were you gonna add in? Uh, yeah, I one of the reasons that I think meme coins are so interesting is just because of how much of a, an IQ test it is and how much of a uh, a movement it can become. If you look back to Occupy Wall Street and you look back to Wall Street uh, memes and all, all this kind of culture that's grown out of giving the middle finger to the financial system, I think it's like it, it's really impressive to me the meme coins that stick around and become worth more than money to some people. It's like uh, it becomes clear over time, and and so uh, yeah, it's just it's just really fascinating to, 
uh, for me to as as a crypto psychologist myself i'm always like very interested in what is motivating people oh love love that take and three weeks from now i will to be a crypto psychologist I, i'm actually an expert on the current meta so when that becomes the meta to be a psychologist that's when my skills will kick in but uh we got we got a lot of speakers up here and i know everybody knows a thing or two about meme coins i want to play a little game a fun game not not like one from the movie saw and you know we've already gotten into it a little bit but this is going to be called zero or hero and I want you to just, everybody's got to say zero or hero when it's your turn. Are meme coins going to zero, or are they going to be the hero this cycle? All right, guys, I'm, I'm going to be playing eeny, meeny, miny, mo, just calling on people like I'm a substitute teacher. Merc, we're starting with you. Zero or hero? I'm going to go with hero. All right, well, t t bro, tell us why. Well, I, I left that out, guys. Hero, zero or hero, <laughs> and tell us why. Uh, just because of how easy it is to captivate people. Like, you know, right now, TikTok's not hitting hard with meme coins just yet, but give it some time and get let it cook. Um, that's where people are going to find it for the retail side, 2025. Um, it'll be the hero bringing in those retail people. Okay, there we go. Very eloquently put. And, you know, I, I personally agree. Like, meme coins, tokenized attention. I know everybody's heard that time and time again. And, you know, it, it, it kind of feels like it is. Like, whichever, whoever's got the eyes, that's that's what really brings candles that we all like. But uh, we got we got another speaker up here, Crashes Clay. Uh, I've been following you for a while. What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing good, dude. I was having some internet issues. Uh, apologies for being a little bit late to the space. How's everyone? Hey, we're, do we're doing great. And uh, like I tell the ladies, even though I'm lying, Better, but now we're doing so much better that you're here. Way better that you're here, but th this time it's actually true. I want to throw you a question that we've been asking everybody. Well, not really. We just started. Meme coins, zero or hero? Are they all going to zero, or are they going to be the hero this cycle? Uh, they're going to be the hero this cycle, bro. The, the entire meme coin sector is at like $50 billion market cap right now. Last cycle, we saw SHIB hit like $88 billion. So the entire sector is like roughly two-thirds of what the actual all-time high of the number one coin was last cycle in the bull run. So we have like tremendous upside. It's insane. And, you know, I have my own theories on meme coins. Obviously, I think everyone understands that this cycle, it's a lot more socially accepted. You know, last cycle was the first time meme coins were ever even like a thing, really. You know, that was the first time you ever heard stories of, coins blowing up people making millions on dog coins but now you know everyone's familiar with that concept and that way of getting rich and making money so there's gonna be a lot more participants this time around you know people have had time to familiarize themselves with that concept of getting rich on something like that so the arena is going to be filled this time around way greater than it was last time and um it's going to be good dude i truly believe this is like you know, the sector to be in this cycle, because I know a lot of people, you know, they have their own sectors like AI, gaming, real world assets. Um, but I think the most simple thing for people getting into crypto to understand is just meme coins. And the reality is when people get into crypto, like what do they want? They want to get rich. They want to hit the lottery. They want to, you know, make a thousand X. They want to buy that next big meme coin is the main reason I think a lot of people come to crypto and it's not to buy the ai coin um even though i'm sure ai is going to do really well but like just like the typical person now what do they want and i believe the typical person wants to replicate the dogecoin success stories that they heard of last cycle you know bro very well put and you said i, I can't even count to 50 billion like oh my god that's a big damn number and from what everybody's saying it's only getting bigger like i'm, I'm excited to see these things uh, everybody, I want you to know in about 10, 15 minutes, we're going to do a little, uh, fun AMA, uh, section about Brett with Crash's Clay. I'm excited for that one. Before that, Merck, I'm throwing it over to you. No, I was just going to add on to what Crash was saying. Um, I definitely agree with all of his points. I, the other thing too is connection. It's hard to connect with some other, with other tokens in the space, but with the meme coins, you can find a group of people that you connect with on a different level aside from like money, you know, just the humor community aspect. 
And I know a lot of people come to the space for that connection. Hey, ab- absolutely. Great point. Uh, Hexy, over to you. Yeah, what's up? So just, just to uh, go on from your point, uh, mean coins are definitely going to be the hero of this cycle. <clears throat> I think we got clues of that end of last cycle when Shiba Inu and Dogecoin were two of the biggest, well, if not two, the two biggest uh, performers in terms of like price appreciation. Let's be honest here, guys. Everyone who's in crypto, uh, 99.9% of guys in crypto are here to make money. We don't care about utility. We don't care about changing the world through tech. We just want to make money, right? 100%. Um, there are some guys that genuinely want to do it, but uh, that's that's not why the majority of guys are here. We had clues at the end of last cycle that meme coins were going to be the hot thing moving into next cycle. That's I'm not going to shill it, but that's why we created Nine Inch because we knew that meme coins were going to were going to be the the hot topic of this next bull run that we go into. And I just think that like the meme culture in general is growing and growing and growing. And the reason I think it's going to do so well <clears throat> is because everyone knows a guy that got rich off ship or got rich off Dogecoin, or got rich off anything. I mean, there's there's like thousands of meme coins that were like super successful. For every one meme coin that's successful, there's maybe a thousand that didn't make it, right? But a lot of them have a pump and then a dump, but it's, it's the second pump or the third pump. That's what makes the difference. And um, I just think that like moving into the next cycle, because everyone who knows someone who got rich in crypto, the chances are they probably either, they bought into a shitcoin last cycle, and did really, really well with it, or they've been in Bitcoin since 2014 or something like that. They're the only two people that got rich in crypto is like guys who bought Picture of Dog or guys who've held for like 10 years. So the next wave of uh, retail that's coming in, they are going to be buying meme coins 100%. They are going to be buying meme coins. That will be like the majority of everyone's portfolio. So obviously you've got a job on your hands of picking like the right ones, which ones are going to do well, which ones have got trusted founders, which ones are going to... uh, stand the test of time but if you pick the right one and you hold and you don't jeet it on the first dip or pump or whatever if you actually hold that shit you're going to do really really well and um we, we've had some meme coins launch on um in fact uh one, one thing i will show real quick everyone here is familiar with bitboy yeah everyone knows bitboy probably arguably the biggest crypto influencer in the world he just launched a meme coin on pulse chain using the nine inch decks to do it and it went up 777x in like three hours. Uh, it's on a dip now, but like it just goes to show you how quickly these things can move. So uh, shout out Bitboy, thank you for trusting in uh, in Nine Inch to um, to you know provide your liquidity and launch your meme coin because we have a launch pad over there. You can launch your meme coin in about ten seconds. So uh, oh. yeah, just wanted to throw that out there real quick because meme meme season. The, this is the meme coin cycle. Maybe next cycle there's a different narrative. Maybe it's AI. I don't know. But meme coins is the narrative for this cycle, 100%. Oh, there, there we go. And you just said something that gave me a little, little bit of flashbacks. I won't tell anyone the specific situation, but uh, the, it's the second and third pump that matter, and don't G. That, that's it, guys. Use your imagination. We will leave it at that. Global Whales, I saw you had your hand up, then you put it down. What's on your mind? Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you. And uh, it's great to be here. Yeah, actually, I want to talk about, uh, first of all, I would say Bitcoin is the hero this season. And um, I actually want to um, just uh, addition to what uh, some other speakers have said. And it, in particular, it has to do, it's not just about the financial gain of Bitcoin, but the social phenomenon that it, bring, uh, uh, that it brings by putting people together. We say that most Bitcoin uh, is made up of group of uh, enthusiasts and investors who often gather on the social media platform, and uh, they have this kind of sense of belonging. I'll do like what the last speaker you say. Most of them is to make money, but that bringing together and um, the mutual support uh, it, it forms, or people give to themselves, is also is a vital p- uh, part or point. I want to uh, just talk about. Oh man, Ex- excellent point. Thanks for sharing, uh, Fiddy. Over to you. Yeah, so I, I, I actually have a little di- different take on this. There are, were a lot of meme coins. And then so we, if we say hero, I would hate to have somebody in here. There's 2,500 people in here going buy every meme coin there is. think they're all going to be heroes because we got to be very cautious how we say this. So I would say there's going to be the same thing we have in everything else, stock market, NFTs. You're going to have your top 10, top 15. You're going to have maybe your top 20. And then a lot of them are just going to go to the wayside. They're going to say, 
uh, things didn't work out, whatever else. But but I, I and I just heard you say that you know, a lot of people don't care about utility, and I, I don't I don't know if the utility is the word, but how about if meme coins start to do things that make sense? Like right now, uh, Moon Trump is one of my favorite NFTs. That they, they've got some really cool memes, and what they're doing is they're actually raising money for like uh, like human trafficking, like kids that are being taken, just all kinds of bad things. I don't want to go into, and they're actually working with real. Real Republicans in there are giving them money for that. And they're not even talking about it. They're just building their token. Now, what I like about that is there's big investors and there's big whales that came in there. They popped up to almost 8 or 10 million market cap last time I looked. I don't, I don't look at charts because they are doing things. So you don't have to, have to scream utility, but having the right people in your meme coin, the right communities, like if you go to like some of the bigger uh, meme coins, you'll see, you know, 50 soul or, you know, 60 or 100 being put in there. And then you see some that don't have any volume. And it doesn't mean they're going to come back. It doesn't. So that's why we got to be very, ca very cautious when we say all meme coins are going to do well. That's not true. That's not true. I think you need, you need to look for about five or six good things in these meme coins. You need to make sure you're not just like, Taking people on the pathway, they see a frog, they gotta buy it. That's kind of my point. Hey, nine, Ninety-nine percent of meme coins are gonna die, man. That's what people have to understand. It's the same with NFTs. Like ninety-nine percent of them are not gonna make it. It's just picking the right ones, man. That's why I want to say that because I really don't want to see what happened last time. Everybody go buy up every NFT there is for two dollars, and they're like, "But I have IP. I own the IP. I can create a movie. I can create a metaverse. You know what? I could be flying around shopping. I mean, all kinds of stuff was said." So we don't want to go through that phase again. We, I don't want to see another bear market where you guys are all trying to kill each other. So I would yeah, especially, uh, especially that now VCs are aping into meme coins. Exactly. Is, one, one question for you guys. Is there a meme coin with the ticker IP? Like, that, that seems hella memeable. Like, making memes with the <laughs> ticker IP, comparing that to NFTs? Like, I think that's one called ICUP. Bro, but, someone, someone <laughs> had to have thought of that. Like, I would, I would be... I would be disappointed in Web3 if that hasn't happened yet. But want to get to some of these hands, and then we're going to talk all about Brett, a little bit about base. Joa, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I was going to echo what 50 said, where, you know, I wanted to also play devil's advocate, where zero, because 99.9% .9 of these tokens are going to be dog shit at the end, right? And there's a lot of people listening, and we don't want them just jumping into any meme. There's tokens that make sense, and those those tokens, I think, uh, you know, Crash kind of actually turned me on to this whole narrative. If you're not following Crash, I think you should if you're into meme tokens. Um, but, you know, there's going to be, there's winners. If you, a lot of people don't know, but one of the greatest adoptions for Binance was actually Doge. They didn't have enough agents to onboard people last bull market because of Doge, Right. Then you see something like Bonk, which Bonk saved Solana after FTX, right? So now that it's been proven that meme coins can actually bring on adoption and bring on new people, every chain is going to want their main meme coin or what I call mascot token, right? Brett, I think, is the mascot token. I mean, I think it won that race to be base's mascot token. But there's not one on AVEX, there's not one on Telegram. Well, some people think it's Redo, I think there'll probably be another one. Um, uh, there's not one on SUI. Like, there's a ton of chains that don't have a mascot token. They're all going to be looking for them, right? Um, and I think that's a really good narrative to play with, with, with memes. Then you have things like Pepiverse, which, you know, just makes sense because of, you know, it goes way back to 4chan days. Um, and then there's everything else in between, which... You know, I'll, most of them aren't going to make it. So be careful. It is a minefield, although there will be heroes. And I think those heroes will make it seem like meme coins are the thing. It's these mascot tokens that are really going to be the thing, I think. Oh, man, that, that actually sounded like some alpha. I, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Don't, st don't step on any landmines. You don't want to lose your foot. Don't click on the wrong meme coins. You might lose your finger. Like... I think there's a meme in there somewhere. Merck, over to you. Merck, you with us? As soon as you went silent, I knew you called on me and I lost signal. Um, but no, I was just going to say, like, yeah. 
I was just going to say when I when I was saying the hero, I don't I don't necessarily mean like one meme coin is going to be the hero, but the idea that meme coin culture that's going to be the hero um, for the narrative uh, this next cycle because people. Are going to you know look towards those those are, uh, to park their land. So be careful, D Y O R, and don't take anyone's you know opinions as financial advice. Uh, but uh, definitely, like uh, the number one thing I look for in a meme coin is decentralization. If there's too much centralized control in that coin, then there's too there's, there's a singular point of failure, which typically leads to a rug. So the the more decentralized it is, and the more community involvement uh, that there can be, the the stronger ability I, I, it has in my opinion hey absolutely uh a excellent take completely agree with like 69 percent of it aj what's going on thanks for joining us how you doing today good brother it's good to be here i've, I've been slam busy in dubai taking meetings and being busy but it's good to be here it's good to talk meme coins with everyone here and mario and you so i'm excited to get into this conversation no, I want to say something, by the way, about the last point I think uh, Merck was saying about how he wants to see that the tokens are super decentralized. I want to ask if you knew that the top 100 bonk holders own 66.73% of the supply, top 100 doge holders own 65% of the supply, and top 100 floki holders own 88% of the supply. I think it's actually a very commonly misunderstood point about meme coins actually if you study the most successful meme coins ever you'll notice that there actually is a high concentration concentration of ownership within the top 100 so i think a lot of people actually make the mistake they actually want to see the most decentralized thing ever but the most decentralized tokens actually usually perform the worst from my research and of course you can look at this tweet that i pinned up here but, um, yeah, just a common misunderstanding I think a lot of people have. And the truth is, you know, if if everyone in the world owns a share, right, well, everyone in the world doesn't care about a coin as much as a potential founder or as a potential team that wants to see it do extremely well. So, th you know, these people are actually a lot more likely to sell the token uh, than actually you know, Avalanche Foundation or Solana Foundation or Tesla selling their stock or Amazon. So actually, it's a common trait of the most successful projects that, uh, you know, the supply is actually not all in the most decentralized, you know, distribution ever. So that's that's my research. Wait, Wait hold on. I, I got to add something in there. 66 percent. I don't I don't know. They need to buy more and get it up to 69 Crash. Yeah. Who who the, who owns sixty nine percent when we're on that level? Like I want I, I want to buy the one where they got sixty nine percent. You know I don't know the exact numbers for Brett, but I think Brett is probably around there in the sixty five sixty nine percent range. So, bro, let let's fucking go. That's my favorite range between sixty five and sixty nine percent. Zillion. Add up? to that. Yeah. Add to that. Very narrow. Uh, very low liquidity levels in the in the in the pools which make uh, huge uh, price spikes when there is buying demand so uh yeah so these are all components now that we kind of know as standards of uh of uh, of meme coins hey absolutely love it uh, appreciate all of the alpha from everybody you got you guys are schooling me and i'm, I'm the host up here i want to get to these last two hands and then we're going to jump right into it with crash uh hexy what's up yeah, so just just a quick one. Um, completely agree with Crash. Uh, centralized ownership is actually a feature, not a bug. If it's in the right hands, um, a lot of the most, a lot of the biggest performing coins that we've ever had in the history of crypto have been massively centralized. Um, for example, we had a coin launch on Pulse Chain recently called SolidX. Um, it was launched by a benevolent uh, benevolent whale. Sorry, I can't get my words out. Benevolent whale who already has probably 50 to $100 million worth of net worth just on one wallet. Um, he launched a token where 90% of it was held by one entity. That coin went up 35,000x in about eight days um, <laughs> from launch. And, and the, reason, the reason it went up so much is because of the centralized ownership. Um, Hex, I, I know Hex is not a meme coin. Maybe it's a bit of a controversial one. But Hex went up 10,000x uh, over a period of about one year. 92 to 93 percent of that is owned by one guy 
And so, we, know who, uh, uh, we know all who is that, right? <laughs> well, we know who it is, but, you know, it's called the OA, right? So we, we can't talk about it, but we, we know who it is. But it didn't stop it going up 10,000x. That's my point. Centralized ownership is, is actually a feature if the ownership is done by a benevolent whale who is not going to dump it on your head. When, when the supply, when 100% of supply is split up across uh, 10,000 guys, chances are 5,000 of them are going to G it and sell it, you know, for a profit. Whereas if 90% of it is owned by one guy who's never going to sell, that's actually very bullish for price. I just wanted to throw that out there, Crash. 100% agree with what you're saying. Uh, big, big, big cheese, bro. Hey, there, there we go. I don't, I don't think anybody really likes the Jeets, but uh, you know, give, give us something to talk about. All right, Mark, uh, la some last thoughts for us, and then we're gonna dive right into it. Base, brass, base, Brett, and Crash. But go for it, Mark. No, I was just gonna say, like, yeah, obviously, you know, when you have um, a strong concentration like that, that definitely leads to, you know more strength for the, the price but at the end of the day decentralization in my in my mind is not not necessarily the accumulation of, of walls like that but the, the ability for someone to buy in and participate in that model right um just because there's a strong con uh, concentration doesn't necessarily mean that it it doesn't have other decentralized components to it there are certain meme coins that launch like this guy who's talking about 90 percent of one one guy's wallet like that to me is a massive red flag regardless of how diamond hand that dude may or may not be um, if that guy dies or if he's, if he's, um, you know, his wallet is compromised then that coin is dead. Oh, bro, if he dies, that's that's even more bullish though. That's the point. Like if he dies, then it's even more bullish because then the coins will never hit market. Do you know no, what I mean? No, no, no. It, it's only bullish when the founder dies the third time. The, the first and second time it's uh, every, everybody's a little worried, but when it happens the third time, <laughs> we know something big is coming. That that's just my line of thinking. But, all right, all right. Point taken. Okay, so I'll tell the, the guy that runs Solid X that he's got to die three times. Then we can be bullish. Yeah, cool. All right. Yeah, that that three. bro. That that's exactly how it goes. Like second okay. second time is when I'm gonna start following him. Third time we gear up and put a space together. But Crash Base and Brett. That's what we're about to get into right now. Uh, man, I I want to I want to just dive right into it. I mean, Crash. What what's what's Brett like? What's Brett? Why's Brett? Who's Brett? When's Brett? Just just talk to us about Brett. Yeah, so everyone I'm sure is familiar with Pepe, right? On E, it's the second largest meme coin on that blockchain. Um, it's around what two point five three billion market cap. Last I checked, so Pepe was drawn by an artist, Matt Fury. So is Brett, right? They are the two main characters from the comic series uh you know they originate from the same comic so basically a lot of people you know see pepe on ethereum which has been you know the golden unicorn of this entire bull, bull uh you know bear market uh because in during the bear market when bitcoin was dropping from thirty thousand to twenty five thousand dollars that's actually when pepe went on its run from zero to 1.6 billion then it got listed on binance and it crashed from 1.6 billion down to 300 million so basically though within all of our minds if you're here in the bear market you remember that run that pepe went on because the market was incredibly boring you know prices were falling things were just dull and, and dark in the market and pepe was that light that came in this bear market and really sparked a lot of life and actually created you know, this insane culture, I guess, and like some would call it degeneracy of like people now sitting here on Dex tools and Dex screener every day looking for the next meme coin that could pull the next Pepe, right? Like it since Pepe, meme coins have become a lot more popular as like an everyday thing that we're looking at and, and talking about and doing. Uh, you know, before Pepe, we were not talking about meme coins every single day. We didn't have people trading on Dex Tools and Dex Screener nearly as much. So anyways, Pepe, you know, the green frog on, on Ethereum runs to 3 billion. Currently, it hit 4 billion. So everyone's seen the success that Pepe's had. So a lot of people now naturally speculate that, well, the other main character from the series, Brett, he's blue. And he's on a blue blockchain, which is not just any blockchain, it's Coinbase's blockchain. So now you have this kind of like pair where, you know, last cycle we had Dogecoin hit 80 billion, Shiba Inu hit 40 billion. 
So now you have Pepe, who has hit $4 billion on Ethereum, and now you have Brett on base, which is hitting $850 million so far and has pulled back alongside Pepe. So it's kind of like this pair combination of success where, you know, once again, you see Doge run up, Shib run up. You see Pepe run up, you see the other main character from the series run up. And once again, you know, we had a speaker earlier say that, you know, like 99% of coins, they're not going to do anything. Like they're going to go to zero, just like the NFTs and, and just like a lot of coins. But then, you know, if you can establish yourself as a mascot of an entire blockchain, right, as the face of an, enti an, an entire chain, like, you know, Brett is to now base chain, you know, you, you solidify yourself in, in a way that, you know, you're, you're there to stay, right? And so a fact I want to point out to a lot of people, if you go look on CoinGecko right now, and you look at all the meme coins in the world, of that 50 billion market cap, roughly, for the entire meme coin sector, around 42 billion of that belongs to the top 10 meme coins in the world. So over 82% of the entire market share belongs to the top 10. Okay. Now, that means 18% of the entire market share belongs to every coin outside the top 10 in meme coins. So in my opinion, right, this cycle in meme coins, your job is to find out you know, where is majority of the money going to flow to, right? And you can factually see that 82% of it is going to flow to the, the top 10. So then it, it, our job becomes what is already in the top 10 that we believe is going to perform incredibly well as it receives all that money flow or what is outside of the top 10, which is going to make its way into the top 10 and receive a bulk of that money flow, you see? So that's kind of the way I'm approaching this cycle and looking at meme coins because once again you know think about it. if there's 50,000 plus meme coin projects right outside of the top 10 that means you have 50,000 projects plus competing for 18 percent of the market share so you're at a major disadvantage and you're basically on like the kitty side of the pool if you are fighting for 18 percent of the share of the market and, and there's 50,000 plus projects so that's why I've narrowed down my focus to what I believe are the top 10, you know, top 10 potential coins uh, in meme coins. Because these are the ones that are not going to go anywhere. These are going to be the ones that receive 82% of the market share, right? And Brett being the number one meme coin on base, I believe, is going to be, uh, you know, in that top 10 this cycle. I, I believe it already is, right? And it's only been out for like, you know, 60 days. So it's the number one meme coin on base, right? And it's like... You know, currently, if you look at that top 10 list, you see the number three meme on Ethereum is Floki, and they're at like a $1.2 billion market cap. So, you know, this is a question I'm bringing to all of you guys to think about, which is, do you think the number one meme coin on base would flip the number three meme on Ethereum, which is at a $1.2 billion market cap? That's, that's where I leave the stage to you to think about, like, what do you think? Oh man, honestly, for for one, after this, like thinking too hard is gonna make my head hurt. Way way too many numbers being thrown around. But I I need to point out, guys, Crash. If if there was going to be a meme coin class at Harvard, Crash would be on the short list to go teach that thing. AJ, AJ what what do you think about what Crash said? I I love the guy. I mean, we've been chatting a lot. We do a lot of spaces together and, um, you know, full disclosure, I own bread. Um, and I've been talking about base when everyone was talking about Solana uh, a few months back. And um, I actually wanted to talk about the bullish case on base. Um, I, I'm out here. I've met a lot of people in Dubai and, and I uh, learned a lot about the on-chain summer campaign that they're going to be having. And, and my thing is this, my, my thing is I'm looking at base as a chain and how they have a hundred million users on their app and that they are potentially going to try to shift a lot of those people over to their actual chain. And so what I am trying to do, my position is I'm trying to collect, hold the top one, two, three, four uh, that I believe have a chance to do something during this next bull run. Uh, and hold them during that time. And obviously, Brett is the top meme on base. That's, I think that's been established uh, through a lot, a lot of situations that's been going on the last couple of weeks. They're holding strong. And so, so for me, I'm just looking at the on-chain summer. I'm looking at the base chain itself. I'm very bullish on. And I'm trying to find a position 
in certain coins uh, during this cycle. So that's what I think. So, so Crash, why, I guess I'm going to ask you a question. Why do you think base chain, like what is your thought about base chain and Brett on base specifically outside of the color scheme, outside of the blue branding, which I think is cool, you know, blue, Brett, Coinbase, blue, that's obviously there, you know, so tell us what you think about base itself. Yeah, so today there's 4 million users on, on the network, right? And Coinbase, they they have this blog article, basically, their goal is to onboard a billion users on chain, right? So if we have 4 million users and they're trying to bring a billion, I mean, if they reach their target, that's over 900 million users to come after us, which I don't believe in that personally. I, I just don't see a blockchain getting a billion users on chain, or at least not in the short term or next five year future. That's for sure, in my opinion. So anyways, um, you know, we, we say, all right, what if base onboards 10 to 20% of their target, right? So 100 million to 200 million users, that's a lot more reasonable, in my opinion, right? So okay, then if we're the first 4 million users, there's going to be 100 million or 200 million, then that's objectively 90 million plus people that are going to come after us into this network and so whatever you see has happened currently amplify you know magnify that times 25 is basically what i see happening uh, at least for the number one meme coin on the blockchain because like basically if we have four million people on the chain today and the number one meme on this blockchain is at a 380 million market cap roughly last i checked well what's going to happen when there's 25 times more people right well, that's the thing. When people get over to a blockchain, one of the most popular activities to do on that network is to buy the number one meme coin. Like, you, you do realize on Ethereum, Shiba Inu blew up to $40 billion market cap, and that was one of the most popular trading activities, you know, just activity, period, of the last bull run. People were coming to Ethereum to buy Shiba Inu. Uh, you know, people were buying that, and it was just a huge popular activity. You know, same thing with Solana. You have so many people who would have never came to Solana, who would have never touched it if it wasn't for, you know, Dog with Hat or Bonk. And so a lot of people, their main and primary reason for coming to a blockchain is to buy that big meme coin that, you know, explodes and goes into the billions of market caps, like I said, like we've seen with, you know, Dog with Hat and, and Shiba Inu. And so I'm, I'm going to get into some numbers here, which I don't think it's complicated to understand, guys, which is that... Last bull run, right? Ethereum hit a $540 billion market cap. Okay, Shiba Inu hit a $40 billion market cap. Meaning Shiba Inu became 7%, 7.4% the value of its blockchain, right? It's just a simple proportion. Ethereum hit 540, you know, Shiba Inu hit 40 billion. So once again, the number one meme on that blockchain became 7.4% the value of its chain. Then you look at Dog with Hat. It hit $5 billion market cap. Meanwhile, Solana hit $85 billion, which puts it around a 55 5.9% ratio of its blockchain. So what I've noticed is that the number one meme on these big chains, right, the successful chains, are reaching greater than 5% the ratio of their blockchain. So if we can value a blockchain and then we apply that ratio right to the number one meme coin we can get a very solid understanding of what the number one meme coin on a blockchain should be valued at or worth so that's where then i realize what dog with hat has done on solana i realize what shiba inu has done on ethereum and now i'm looking at base right to be that next big explosive chain of this bull run that a lot of people are going to come over to like i said you know coinbase is trying to onboard a billion users they only have four million today so there's all these new people that are going to come over all these new people that are going to take an interest in this chain and once again we're in the first four million so what i have to think about next then is what is the value of base as a network like what market cap is it you know even though there's no token today and I'll give you guys one way I, I value base as a network. And this is my logical thought process and reasoning. And, and I would love to hear how other people would value it. But, you know, at $4,800 Ethereum last cycle, Ethereum once again hit a, a $540 billion market cap. 
So if Ethereum hits around a $9,000 price this bull run, it'll cross a trillion dollar market cap. So base is the number one layer two blockchain in the world, right? So what do you think the value of the number one layer two would be if Ethereum is a trillion market cap? In my opinion, 10% the value of Ethereum at least. So this means if this bull run, we see Ethereum hit a trillion dollar market cap, then the number one layer two blockchain, which is base, should probably be valued at 100 billion plus in my opinion. So now if we understand that the number one uh, layer two, which is base, is a hundred billion plus dollar market cap, then what would the number one meme coin on that network be, right? Well, based on Shiba Inu being 7.4% the value of its blockchain in Ethereum, based on Dog with Hat being around 5.5, 5.9% the value of Solana, then I would anticipate Brett then naturally becomes a five to an $8 billion market cap pretty modestly this cycle. And it's at 380 million. So I know a lot of people, they don't look at these numbers. They don't actually do their research. They come to crypto. They hope and pray to get rich or buy and get lucky. Me, I try to eliminate luck. I try to look at the numbers. I try to logically think through these things because I do think in a space where 99% are acting on their emotions, if you can try to be logical and, and really anticipate things in advance based on the numbers, you'll have a huge advantage. So I know when some people listen to me and they hear these numbers, some people may be lost. Some people may really get it. I'm not sure. But to me, I get it. And that's how I have an edge. And I feel really confident with, you know, Brett as the number one meme coin on this chain to reach at least a $5 billion plus dollar market cap this cycle. And that's modest. Oh, man, that is, uh, that, that, that's, that was one hell of a speech. I mean, shit, that, that's all I can say about that. Uh, we, we are running a little low on time today. I want to get one more question in with Crash, and then we're going to wrap this one up. Very fun. Like, oh, my God. Up, up here with Brett, all this blue, all this bullishness. But, Crash, you, it, is Brett going to be the, the shib of this cycle? Like, is that something realistic to say? It's more than realistic to say when you understand the numbers. You know, what I just broke down to you was the percentage of, that a number one meme coin is becoming out of its blockchain's market cap, right? Another way to look at it is if there's 4 million users today and we anticipate there's going to be 100 million users in the next one to two years here. Okay, that means we're front running 96 million humans, 96 million users that are going to come after us on this chain. Now, let me ask you, bro. On average, Right. What what do you think the amount of money a, a person would have on base? Considering that some people will have a thousand bucks on the chain, some will have forty thousand, and some will have over a million dollars in their wallet on this network. What do you think is a fair and average amount of money per user on this chain? A couple hundred bucks. Okay, a couple hundred bucks. So if we have ninety six million people coming after us and on average they have a couple hundred bucks. Right. I'm just going to I'm going to even round this down to 100 bucks just to make the math more easy for everyone. And, and also just to lowball these numbers. Right? I like to be extremely modest with these numbers. So, you know, 96 million people times 100 bucks on average. That gets us nine point six billion dollars of money coming after us today. Out of that nine point six billion dollars of money flow. Some percentage of that money is going to find its way to the number one meme coin on this blockchain, as we know. The number one meme on a chain is a very popular activity, and it's actually the main activity on a blockchain alongside NFTs and some other DeFi opportunities that there is. So my anticipation, right, is that we're going to see around 3 to 5 to 10% of all that money flow is going to find its way to the number one meme coin on base. So if we have $9.6 billion of objective and pretty easy to see money flow coming over here, right after us out of that 9.6 billion dollars i think 300 to a billion dollars of that money is going to find its way into the number one meme on this chain which is brett when that money finds its way to that this is going to send beyond 10 billion plus market cap so that is why what you said about this being the shib of this bull run objectively you can look at the numbers and see that that's not that's not just hype or that's not like that's not just a talking point like legitimately there's numbers that you can very easily see and look at, which proved to you why this is the case. Oh, man, that 
that that sounded so fire. Like, uh, I, Crash, uh, we, we definitely need you to come back. This was an awesome space. A lot, lot of base, a lot of billions, a lot of blue. You, you know what I go by when I'm trading? I don't look at the numbers. Like, I close my eyes, and the color was bouncing between black and blue. And I was like, all right, that, that's my cue. Got to ape in now. But th this was great, everybody. Appreciate all the listeners for coming out, all the speakers for coming up. All the alpha shared in this space is priceless. You, you probably could put a price on it. But for all intents and purposes, priceless, guys. Um, th this was a great one. There's going to be more spaces for Mario today. Other ones later this week. Catch you guys later, and hope everybody has a great day.